Dear God, we know, dear God, we may have not been perfect in everything that we've done this week. But dear God, we come to be perfect in our worship. Because you say they that worship, you must worship you in spirit and worship you in truth, God. So dear God, we come with a perfect worship today. Dear God, we come with a sincere praise today. Because you have been good to us. And dear God, we worship you, dear God, on every Sunday, dear God. We worship you on every day of the week, dear God. But dear God, today is just a little bit more special, God. Because dear God, this is the day that the world celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we come now, dear God, to tell you thank you for defeating death. We come to tell you thank you for defeating the grave. We come to tell you thank you, dear God, for defeating sin. Dear God, uh, and now sin no longer has been made over us. Uh, and for that reason, we come now just to say thank you. Dear God, we thank you because where your spirit is, uh, dear God, there is liberty. Uh, in spite of what we've been through, uh, we can still worship you, dear God. Uh, in spite of our shortcomings, uh, we can still worship you, God. Uh, and we come right now just to say hallelujah. But that's the highest praise we have given today. Uh, Dear God, we pray on this resurrection Sunday, dear God, uh, that somebody will experience you in a new way. Uh, we pray on this resurrection Sunday, dear God, uh, that somebody will fall out from their wicked ways. Uh, the weak will be made strong, uh, and the strong will be made strong. Uh, how thine own way uh, in this place of worship. Uh, we buy anything, dear God, uh, that will hit the deliverance today. Uh, we buy God, uh, that will hinder your healing today, dear God. Uh, we buy anything, dear God, uh, that will hinder your word from going forward. Uh, have your way, God. Uh, even, dear God, in those virtual places, God, uh, let your anointing be there, dear God. Uh, let your power, dear God, be there, God. Uh, have your way, dear God. Uh, let's in such a way, dear God, uh, that we'll treat every worship Sunday like a worship Sunday. That comes, dear God. Uh, Every Sunday, like a resurrection Sunday, because you died, uh, but you rose up uh, with all power in your hand. Uh, the power so we can walk right, uh, the power so we can serve right. Uh, we ask you, God, uh, move in a mighty way, uh, and we just all of God, uh, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the praise, uh, we'll give you the glory. Now, Lord, uh, now, Lord, uh, bless mankind everywhere. Uh, all over this land and country. Bless them that bless them that we are going to go here. We have these things. Now, in Jesus' name we pray. Now. And all God people say amen. 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 Look at your neighbor say neighbor. I'm getting ready to rise up. Come on, look at me saying like your neighbor say neighbor. I'm getting ready to rise up. In praise and worship. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Lord, let's worship you this morning as a corporate body. Lord, I lift your name on high. Did anybody come to lift them up this morning? Come on, did anybody come to lift them up because he got up? And because he will back like to face tomorrow. Let's give God glory and let's give him praise. Come on, put your hands
Somebody else say hallelujah. He had won the victory. He did it for you. And he did it for me. And that's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Because if he had not risen, we could have a peace that surpasses all understanding. If he had not risen, we could not be able to face the day, yet alone deal with tomorrow. But because he lived, all fear, somebody say all fear, all fear is gone, amen. We can do all things through Christ with scriptures. Come on, give God another hand of praise for the choir. We just have to pray for worship, amen, amen, amen. We thank God for them, amen. As we're ready to move forward, amen, if there be any, if there be any, amen, that have the Easter speeches, Amen. From the ages, amen. Or from one month old, amen, to 99 years old, amen. If you have Easter speeches, amen, please sit on my left, amen, sit on my left, amen, come to my left, amen, your right, my left, your right, come sit on this, amen, roll over here, amen, amen, right here, amen, 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 so I can work with you. Lord, we got to have your friends, amen, amen, right on the front door, amen, 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 have a seat right there, amen. Amen, amen, so we can, amen, and then we can keep going, amen, everybody else, amen, amen, I see some of y'all out there about 52 and 63, amen, amen, you won't move, amen, amen, I know you remember that Easter speech, amen, 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 come on, get down to have that praise for that, amen, 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 we come to celebrate it on this resurrection Sunday, amen, what Jesus has done for us. He have given us the victory. Amen. Amen. At this time, at this time, amen. Amen. They're going to come. Amen. They're going to amen. Give us amen. That Easter sermon. Amen. Amen. So when we were doing that, all we were doing was preparing for Easter sermon. Amen. They know they don't talk about Jesus look at they say it ain't that but a sermon. You know, that's right, it ain't nothing but a sermon. Amen. Everybody ought to have a sermon, amen, that they can talk about Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So they're going to come, amen, and they're going to tell you their name, amen, and they're going to, amen, they're going to come, amen, and they're going to read, amen, their Easter speech, amen. Y'all come on, give this young man a hand, amen.
Tom that they he would give to show us the way. Cheerfully, 
because you love a chip forgiver. So dear God, we pray that you will bless them and be using the building and the advance that we can do. Dear God, bless in such a way. And dear God, allow those who are sowing into this ministry, dear God. Dear God, to see, dear God, the works that are being done, dear God. The, the naked that are being clothed, the hungry that are being fed, dear God. And dear God, heaven knows in our community. Dear God, we pray, now, dear God, that you will bless. We ask this in Jesus' name. We pray. All God people say amen. 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 Starting from the real father, sister of the ushers. As we come around the deal in Jesus' name. Thanks to our walls on both sides. Thanks to our walls, father, sister of the ushers. Oh, oh, oh. 
shed your blood for me.
so glad Hallelujah You died for me Jesus, hey, what you think about 
have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. Somebody say he called me friends. Amen. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you shall go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it you. And that's enough. God's word for God's people. Father, heaven, let we increase, let we go to increase. Have your way in this place of worship. And we say, God, they give you honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Today, there's a word from the Lord. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. Amen. We're coming from these scriptures. Today, on this resurrection Sunday, we'd we'll like to talk from the subject. The best friend a sinner could ever have. Amen. The best friend a sinner could ever have. Come on, repeat after me. Say the best friend a sinner like me could ever have. Come on, you God, and have a prayer. Amen. I'm coming to tell you today, we must never stop looking at Jesus. We shouldn't just look to him on resurrection Sunday. But we ought to look to him every day of our lives. Because the Bible said that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, Jesus is the leader of our faith. Not the pastor. Not the deacons. Not the mother board or the woman board. Jesus is the leader of our faith. Amen. And he's also the finisher of our faith. In other words, Jesus is the one that makes our faith complete. Right. Our faith would never be complete without Jesus. Jesus completes our faith. And I want you to understand that today. Jesus here, he suffered the death on the cross. And he accepted the shame of the cross as if it was nothing. I say he accepted the shame on the cross as if it was nothing. He had been beat beyond recognition. That little picture you might have up in your house represent Jesus on the cross. That ain't the true thing. The Bible talks about how Jesus' countenance was disfigured. When you look at him, you would have knew who he was. You would have had to do a DNA test, amen, to find out who he really was. If you had not seen him, he be on the cross. But the Bible said that he endured the cross and he did it with joy. Despising the shame. I stop by and tell the Bible say today he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. But the scripture said that greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. I stop by and tell you today, true friendship. Somebody say true friendship. True friendship, true friendship is valuable. And it's also a rare commodity. I said true friendship is valuable, but it's an infrequent commodity. I need you to understand that there is a true statement that you and I may make many acquaintances as we pass through this walk of life, but only very few are true and genuine friends. I stop by and tell you, if you live a lifetime and get do two friends, you done good. Because I stop by and tell you, the truth be told, many of us, we don't have friends, we have acquaintances, we have associates, we have contacts. In the daytime, we have links. But they're really not our friends. But I'm thankful today that I can tell you about one who wants to be your friend. 
I want you to understand there is one this morning that wants to be your friend. And in this passage, Jesus reveals something about the nature of his friendship with his people. And I pray today you pay close attention because when you have Jesus as your friend, you will discover a friendship that knows no limits. I think I'll say that again. I said, whenever you discover Jesus as your friend, you will discover a friendship that has no limits. I stop by and tell you, I don't care who you call your friend. On earth, that friendship has some limits. Come on now, come on, preach, You can talk all you want, talk about that you're lying and die. Then you ride and die to the right circumstance presents itself. And you'll find out they'll ride out on you while you die. Right, right, right. I stop by the tell you today, but Jesus has a friendship that has no limits. Somebody said no limits. I stop by the tell you, Jesus is by that definition, Jesus is the ultimate friend. I say Jesus is the ultimate friend. There is none like him. I searched all over, but I couldn't find nobody. There ain't none like him. Some of y'all say, well, if you're married, what about your wife? There ain't none like him. Well, now he got parents, so what? There ain't none. Come on. Like him. My mama won't have patience with me like Jesus have patience with me. My daddy won't have patience with me like Jesus have with me. My wife won't have patience with me like Jesus have patience with me. Now the truth be told, some of y'all patients already know ran out and want me to stop preaching. You ain't gonna have patience with me like Jesus have patience with me. Jesus is the ultimate friend. Proverbs 18 and 24 says, a man that had friends must show himself friend. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So I'm about to tell you, baby, friends can destroy one another. Ooh. It ain't the enemy you better be worried about. Is that one you call your friend? I say friends can destroy one another. And the truth be told, even people who don't go to Bible study, people who don't even go to church, they understand this verse. A man that has friends must show himself friend. So some friends pretend to be friends. Because the only way we can be friends, whether I want to be friendly or not, but if I want to get close to you, I got to show myself friendly. And when we see people being friendly, we allow people into our space. But I stop about to tell you today, that's why as I got older, I understand the importance of privacy. Everybody don't need to know you. Sometimes friends want to know everything. But everybody don't need to know everything. Sometimes you are just taking to the Lord. And friends, you don't need to know that. You need to talk now. You just let me know. But we can always talk to you. This way, that's about this. You know you can trust me. <laughs> because you ain't ever got to validate what is already true. You know, I take two or three. Depending on what kind of Some of our beds is our group. Some of our chair by the computer is great. We get on that telephone. And we spread news all across. But I stop by to tell you everybody. Somebody's everybody. Let me tell you something, young folks. Your friends don't need to know you're every movie. 
You ain't got to post everything on Facebook. Amen. Remember, I got over 5,000 friends. You got 5,000 listed friends. You don't have really 5,000 friends. I said, if you live this life and get two friends, you're done good. Because a friend is hard to find. And remember that. A man that has friends has to show himself friendly. But the Bible says there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. This verse gives us some insight into Jesus' friendship, y'all. And I want you to understand today, we need to understand Jesus' friendship with us because that is important for us to understand. If you will today, give me a few moments just to share a few insights with you as we think together about this sermon lesson, Jesus, the best friend a sinner could ever have. Look at that verse number 13 in John the 15th chapter. I want you to understand that Jesus, what Jesus does, Jesus does what no other friend does. Jesus has an investment into the sinner's relationship. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. So notice here today that Jesus has an investment in the sinner's relationship. Jesus invests into something that nobody else will make an investment in. Listen to me. Our relationship with Christ is possible because he died for us while we were still trapped in our sin. I said our relationship with Christ is possible because he died for us while we were still trapped in our sin. Romans 5 and 8 says like this, but God committed his love toward us Hallelujah. while we were yet still sinning. That was the best thing about the church. A lot of times we have a church where, you know, if, if you just get right, you know, then, you know, then we'll put you in this office at the church. We'll let you, we'll let you do this and we'll let you do that. Let me tell you something today. Jesus Christ is the only person that will invest in you while you mess up. I'm, I'm tired of the church trying to get people to stop. Y'all stop doing this. Stop. Leave folk alone. If you preach Jesus, you'll find out he like time. If you preach Jesus, you'll find out he like game. If you preach Jesus, you'll find out that if you just allow them to get in the walk, see, see the place of worship, the sanctuary is the washing place. That's why he said, who's ever will? Never, Never. Never. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care what they look like. I don't care how short it is. I don't care how far the pain is hanging down. Never Let me ask you a question. What you concerned about their soul with their clothes? Sometimes we can't minister to people because we so busy looking at the exterior. But we serve a God that don't look at the outward, but the God looks at the heart. Look at David and say, he's looking at my heart. I want you to understand that today. God showed his love toward us. He demonstrated his love. He proved his love because while we were still jacked up, while we were still messed up, while we were torn up from the floor, yet he said son, to down the cross by our sin. Yeah. Now, I'm tell you, there ain't never been a greater love. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't never been such a self-sacrificing or more costly display of love than this selfless moment when Jesus died for us on the cross. When he died for us, we were messed up. Check this out. Those he died for. He referred to them as his friend. While they were still his enemies. Mm. Romans 8 and 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For he is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed. Jesus referred to us as friends while we were yet still sinners. Yeah. Remember why this is true? Well, it's true because anyone who's thinking is controlled by sinful nature. Amen. 
is against God. Yes. See, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You got to have a change of mind. You got to have a change of heart. If you don't have a change of mind and a change of heart, if you're not been regenerated on the inside, you can't do what's right. See, tell me that why in the world we're trying to get people to change their clothes, amen, and stop smoking in public, and stop drinking in public. Why are we trying to get them to change all of that stuff? Because if they ain't changing their heart. Really, 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 they shack it like you ain't never shack it. Really, they see you around like you ain't never shack it. Like you've been a virgin all your life. If your story can really be told. Jesus showed his love to you too while you were yet still a sinner. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, if the church is going to be what the church needs to be, a spiritual hospital, amen, we got to learn how to be patient with people. I don't know about you, but he's still working on me. He's still working on me. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I said, he's still working on me. I ain't standing up here because I'm righteous. I'm standing up here because I'm made righteous in him. Somebody say in him. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't got it all together neither. Ain't none of us got it all together. We're still, amen, on this battlefield. We're practicing, amen, on this battlefield to be more and more like Christ. And if that truth to be told, there is no one else. Ain't nobody in him. That's willing to die for the end. Ain't nobody here. Amen. Nobody. Nobody. Willing to die for the enemy. But Jesus died for the enemy. Stop by and tell you, ain't no one here. Nobody, nobody. Would give up their life. Right. Count up. None of us would give up our life. Amen. For somebody we know on this earth. None of us will give up our life for somebody we know going to elect us. None of us will give up our life for somebody who we know will come and betray us with a kiss. Jesus gave up his life. Knowing that you was going to betray him with a kiss. Knowing that people was going to deny him. He still gave up his life. Amen. Knowing that we were telling him that God made promise. Lord, you get me out of this. I'll never do it again. But yet he still died. Knowing that we were lying. Hallelujah. See, it's one thing to die for a friend. There's another thing to die for an enemy. When Jesus died for us, we was his enemies. Amen. He died hoping that we would become his friends. Because he said, if you do whatsoever I tell you to do, then you are my friend. In other words, what Jesus was saying, I'm really your friend. But you ain't my friend yet. See, in my life, I got some friends that are their friends. But God knows. And they know. But they just don't know I know. That they ain't my friend. I stop by and tell you that there's a chance you can be people friends. But they don't be your friends. And, and, I, and I don't know if some of y'all even get some of this stuff off Facebook. I don't know if you just copy and paste it off other people's page. But, but all this stuff, amen, talk about I don't mess with fake people. And amen, that's why I don't fool with nobody. Amen. Let me tell you something. You are not being to let people dictate who you are. See, you ain't got to be my friend for me to be your friend. I'm going to be your friend, amen, because whatsoever I do, I do as unto the Lord. So when you think you're really making a fool out of me, I'm just blessing you because God told me to bless you. And what you don't realize, every time I bless you, he blessed me like devil. You think you get the best of me, but you really ain't been pushing me up. But the neighbors are you're pushing me up the greater blessings. I stop by to tell you there ain't nobody else in here today who would give their life for somebody you know who is gonna abandon you. But thank God for his love. That his love run deeper than we can comprehend. His love run deeper than we can understand, that we can figure out. 
And the second thing I noticed in John chapter 15, it proved that Jesus is the best friend that a sinner can ever have. Amen. Because Jesus, amen, has intimacy into our new relationship. Somebody say intimacy. Verse 15 says, Henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have laid known to you. Notice Jesus referred to his disciples as friends. Yes, he did. And friends, in the context, amen, the friends is a term that was used in a king's inner circle. See, whenever you were called a friend, that means that you were inside the king's inner circle. In other words, those who are still his servant, amen, but they are still privy to the innermost secret. Even though they are servants, y'all, they are still aware of the innermost secret. Even though, amen, they are still servants, Jesus treat them, amen, with the innermost secret. The inner circle, amen, was not to promote itself, but it existed so that it could carry out the will of the king. When we got saved, we need to understand that Jesus trusted us with everything that the Father had given to him. But it was not to promote ourselves, but it is to promote the King. Somebody say promote the King. Did you understand his love for all of us? Help lead us to great pastures. Lead us beside the still waters. Because he loves us. God will not keep us in the dark concerning the Father's will because he loves us. It's not about to tell you today I'm grateful for the couple of friends that I made traveling through this life. But however, there's a friend who's the most special than any friend I ever met. And his name is Jesus. I don't call him my friend. But he calls me his friend. Think about that for a minute. I don't call him my friend. But he calls me his friend. While you're thinking, imagine me if President Joe Biden would you call me his friend? That would mean I'm being raised to another level. Mm -hmm. Imagine me if LeBron James get on national TV and say, Pastor Bobby T. Williams Jr., he is my friend. Y'all will start saying, oh my God, Pastor, if somebody, cause LeBron James said, he's his friend. But I've been telling y'all, year after year, that I'm a fan of LeBron James. I've been telling y'all that he is my friend. And uh, y'all didn't really pay that no mind because I said he's my friend. But the moment he get on national television and tell everybody that I'm his friend, then you want to start to think of something. And uh, all I'm trying to tell you is uh, when Jesus said uh, that you're my friend. Uh, what that was saying is uh, because he's the king of kings uh, and the lord of lords uh, whenever he declared that you're his friend uh, that's bringing you up uh, to a higher level uh, and I stop by to tell you today, uh, it's one thing uh, for you to say he's your friend uh, but it's something totally different uh, for him to say uh, he's your friend. Uh, I got to leave him now, uh, but I'll stop on uh, to tell somebody uh, when Jesus uh, will swim all night long. Uh, when Jesus uh, was hard uh, to take and hold, uh, to judge and hold. Uh, him, uh, but, uh, 
Can we get up in church with all these fake testimonies? Not me, but I tell you. I told you I was a whole mother. I told you I was a drug dealer. I told you, I told you everything. Ain't nobody really gonna talk about me. But you can finish the story for yourself, but I'll tell you. I ain't got nothing to hide. I will what I was. I have to be careful now. But that old man is still here. Now the fight gets him every day. I want you to understand that this. Jesus is a friend like God, but most times when we sin and we do wrong, we don't come to church, we go away from the church. We want to stay away from the things of God. But, but you must not understand God. God is the best friend that a sinner can ever have. Because the truth be told, some preachers will judge you. Some preachers will condemn you, not hear that. But I know you ain't no good. No, I know you ain't no good, but I ain't no good. Ain't none of them no good outside of Christ. It's in Christ where we are good. But within ourselves, ain't none of us no good. So I want to say to you today, Jesus is the best friend that a sinner who has saved by grace could ever have. Yeah, we saints now, but we still deal with sin. We still... We still guys, anybody done anything wrong this week other than it? Uh, some of y'all doing something wrong right now. You raise your hand. We all come short. But Jesus is the best friend that a sinner can ever have. I want to talk to the sinner now that's out of the ark of sin. If you never repented of your sins and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, because you tried to get this right and get that right, and then you're going to come. I don't know who been preaching to you, but they ain't been preaching the gospel. The gospel don't require that you get yourself right. Because the Bible talks about that those that have been born again, that you are enemies of God. You can't do it right. There's no way you can perform to do what's right. Ain't no way in the world you can take an automatic car, yeah, a manual car that has drive, even that you put it in gear and go, you can't turn it into a stick shift. I don't care how hard you try, you can't turn it into a stick shift. It ain't a stick. And I want you to understand, I don't care how hard you try without God, you cannot live for God. Amen. You cannot serve God. Amen. I don't care how hard you try. But if you come, and say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I know I've done wrong. And I accept Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Believing that Jesus is that he died for my sins. Come on, give God praise. And God will do it. He'll do it right now. He'll come into your heart. This, this is reverence to something. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, you need resurrection power. It takes resurrection power to live right. It takes resurrection power to bring addiction. It takes resurrection power to walk the path of righteousness. And that power is available today. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available today. So I don't care what you're going through today. If you want that today, it's available right now. Resurrection power is available right now. The door of the church is open. You ought to come today. Come today.
on special love. We have to see Sister Grim. You got to I don't know about it. Sister Greer is his sister, though. So he wanted to be that she's in the group. And I'll tell you what, though, hey, amen. They won't give no regards in the family. Hey, amen. Hey, oh, come on, brother. Hey, amen. Come on, you God. Have a praise. Hey, amen. Hey, amen. We're so grateful. Hey, amen. I'm saying my brother Christ. Hey, amen. Minister. Hey, amen. Chris Coswell. Hey, amen. And brother Chris Coswell. Junior, amen. Somebody say tag team. Amen. Tag team, amen. They're both, amen, are coming, amen, with Christian experience. Amen. Uh, Minister Coswell, amen, is a licensed minister. Amen. He's been calling the pastor ever since he's been here. Amen, amen. So I see what God was doing now. Amen. Amen. His son has come with him. Amen. Then we're going to receive them by Christian experience and also, amen, run them through with the right hand of fellowship or welcome them. Amen. But they want to become, amen, members, amen, of under the ministry, amen, here at Williams Road and at St. John. Come on, get down and have a pretty meal. Amen. Amen. So we just give you a temporary kind of fellowship. We're excited, amen, about what God is doing. Amen. And we look forward to hearing the business of God. Amen. Come on, give God a hand that's right. Amen. Come on, God. Amen. Thank you, all Amen. Amen. And also, we need to know, we need to get the sound through, amen, of CNC production. Amen. Somebody say, look at God. Amen. Amen. We had one thing in mind, and God had another thing in mind. Amen. 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 Jesus, y'all, is the best friend a sinner you can ever have. I want to say this to you. If you, if your company, if the people you associate with, but the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. So if the people you hang with make you feel condemned and judging you all the time, that ain't a God. That is not a God, y'all. Amen. 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 The Bible let us know, amen, that we're the bad one of the birds. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage y'all, Jesus, when you mess up, that's the devil. Amen. That's the devil. Amen. I try to tell you all, not going to the you know you ain't worthy. That's the devil. Amen. The Bible says, just confess your sins. Amen. And God will forgive you. Somebody say, right in. Amen. Right there. Come on, give God a hand of praise for right in. Amen. 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 Just thank God. Amen. Thank you all. Amen. We're now getting ready. Amen. To uh, conclude this part of the worship service. Amen. We do. Amen. Have. Amen. If there are those, amen, that have monetary donations, amen, we still have some golden eggs. Amen. That got a little room for some more money to go in. Amen. 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 Just see. Amen. First Lady Williams. Amen. Amen. One of the uh, uh, personnel in the back. Amen. We'll make sure we get it. And this time we get ready. Amen. To go in. I'll explain the rules when we get in the back. Amen. But the, the Easter egg hunt, amen, is going to be from the ages of one. Amen to 15. Amen. 1 to 15. Amen. Amen. 1 to 15. Amen. All those 16 and older. Amen. Do we have somebody 16 here? Anybody 16? All right. Amen. I'm going to push the word. Amen. Smart choice. Don't hold your hand. Amen. 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 But everybody else, amen. And when we on 1 to 15, we're going to have two separate locations. We'll describe all that to you tonight. So after the benediction, amen, let us all come to the back. Amen. We're going to have refreshment, hot dogs on the grill, and all that good stuff. Amen. We all going to, amen, enjoy. And we're going to celebrate, amen, because this resurrection. Somebody say resurrection. And this is resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. So let us stand, amen, for this lesson. Let us stand, amen, for this lesson. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we come now just to say thank you. We thank you, dear God, for this worship experience. Dear God, we just thank you, dear God, for how you have brought us all together from near and far. And dear God, we want to, first of all, thank you, dear God, for our first time visitors, dear God. Dear God, we just thank you for their presence, dear God. And we pray, dear God, that something they said to touch their hearts and encourage them. And dear God, that they'll come back and fellowship with us again. And dear God, we thank you, dear God, for those souls, dear God, that you added, dear God, to the place of worship, dear God. And we just thank you, dear God, and we pray, dear God, that you continue to give us the wisdom. That God may with you, God continue to lead them to God the higher heights in you. And God, we just thank you for the work that you're doing. Dear God, we pray to God as we get ready to go the back, dear God, and just, just celebrate it. Dear God, and enjoy our, our enjoy one another, dear God. Dear God, as we get ready to beat with our people, 
We just ask you, God, that you are blessed. Bless the food, good God, that we will buy it. Good God, bless the refreshment. Good God, bless the, bless the candy and the jelly beans, good God. Good God, that it wouldn't be safe, good God, for everyone. And good God, we just ask now that you dismiss us from this place of worship. But never from your sight and never from your care. We have this in Jesus' name we pray. And all God do is amen. 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 Join us in the fellowship hall. Amen. And let us, amen, uh, get ready to have a good time in Jesus' name. Amen. And there's another service that's getting ready to take place in the sanctuary. Amen. At 11 o'clock. So all of us, amen, let us, amen, go to the fellowship hall. Amen. Amen.